Why, hello there. Welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. By now, you've watched a couple of episodes of the Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces, and it's been fairly uneventful. A lot of back and forth. Definitely not a high point in the game or Act 2. Now we're going to get into the truck. And we're going to go to a church for a midnight jamboree. So this is new. This is Kentucky Route Zero. I guess we're going this way. something about the crystal before. The Bureau. Okay, well. Where did we need to go? Storage facility. Just go back the way you came, find the crystal, and then turn around. Okay, this is the crystal. Eighty one ninety two. back around, they said, right? Nothing here. It's the interesting thing when you use vector graphics, you can make almost anything. Here we are at storage. There's a lot of places to go, though. Should be interesting. St. Thomas Church. It's funny, I actually went to a school called St. Thomas when I was a kid. I only went there for first and second grade, however, I uh, changed to public school afterwards. This parochial school just wasn't for me. But, that's enough about me. Let's check out Area C entry. The C is for Kentucky Route Zero. <laughs> I know, it starts with a K. Alright, so, let's talk to Shannon. Is that it? Over there? It's dusty in here. You work with antiques, you should be used to a little dust, right? I guess. Let's talk to the janitor. Also known as Mike Heck. Or Neil Flynn. Played by Neil Flynn, who is uh, now starring in the middle. Oh, his name is Brandon here. Oh, here for the night mass. Uh, what kind of mass is it? Oh, sorry, I said, where's the congregation? <laughs> Didn't mean to say that. Well, I guess this must look pretty strange, a church without a congregation. When they first moved in here, man, this place was packed. They had a mass every night, two on Sunday. But it got a bit awkward for, to fit everyone in, and the numbers quickly dwindled. Once folks started to see it as a thing that was falling apart, they lost their center of gravity and just started wobbling. Then the preacher stopped coming too, but he left his old tapes. Same with the organist. And I found some old acetates in the Bureau archives photos of people in churches, so I keep it running. Do what you have to do, right? We've all got a job. We all have to do what we all have to do, is what they'd say in Walking Dead. Work is play for mortal stakes. That's the title of the evening's homily, in fact. So I guess if your folks aren't here for the mass, you must be looking for the old bureau records. I moved them down to unit C315 to make room for the mass. It's down at the other end of the building. Same floor. 
I need to get the night mask started, but you can borrow my keys. I'll go. You wait here. Rest your leg. You're looking kind of pale. Nice lady. Well, I'd better get this rolling. Then he presses play on the old tape machine. Is your whole family Catholic? Oh, no, we're not religious. I just watched and listened while the congregation did all this stuff and probably don't understand as much of it as you might think. Anyway, I know how to run the overhead projector in the tape player. At least I know enough to keep it going, right? Well, I didn't like working here. It's okay. I don't really know what else I would do. I used to play a lot of card games, you know, in high school. Some of my friends went to college. Most of them just got jobs. Maybe in a few years we'll be hanging out in bars playing darts or something. You're not allowed to play cards in the bar because it looks like gambling. My leg is killing me. I bet everyone's telling you to go see a doctor. Hey, I get it. Too expensive. My dad cut his arm pretty bad on the job, but he stitched himself back up because we didn't have health insurance. But then his hand didn't work very well, and he got pretty depressed. Eventually, he just sort of... Well, I guess I don't know what he should have done. Who knows, right? So, this is like a hobby? If you asked me what my hobbies were, I'd say card games, science fiction, and perspective geometry. But I run the slideshow, and I play the tapes, and I don't get paid for it. I take it pretty seriously, but no one's telling me I should. Is that a hobby? Seems like there ought to be a more serious word for it. Okay, that's it. Next, there are some rituals that you and I aren't allowed to participate in, I don't think, and I don't remember them anyway. I got it. We were just talking about working hobbies. What? I found what we came here to get. The file on the street name changes. You don't look good. Let's head back to the bureau and get this straightened out. Then maybe we should go see the doctor that clerk recommended. Alright. Jesus, are you alright? What the hell? Oh. What? What are we bad doing back here? Yeah, it's all messed up. Hey, old man, look at me. Can you hear me? Oh, sorry. What happened? I don't know. He collapsed. I think he blacked out. He was mumbling about the old mine for a minute. The old mine where we met. I think I need to see that doctor. Yes, you do. How do we get to this address from here? Um, I don't know. It's pretty tricky going back and forth between, you know, here and there. Bureau's the only way I know. Some of those folks do it all the time. Commuters. Just go back the way you came, find the crystal, and then turn around. All right, so <clears throat> regardless of you know anything you think is going on, we're clearly somewhere between here and the afterlife. I gotta go up to the crystal here. And get back on sixty five. up to a big wide hall and the bureau. That's what we wanted to be back at, right? Act 2, Scene 3. Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces again. I really wish I didn't make this the center point <laughs> of Act 2. We had quite enough of the Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces. Hey, kitty. Let's talk to Marianne. Back so soon? We need to get to the Interstate 65. Lulu filled your paper, so you're in our system now. I can process you whenever you're ready to go back. Just let me know. We're ready to be processed. 
Can you tell us how to get to this? No, but that's Shannon. Look for Dr. Truman. Of course, this is the neighborhood just outside of Bowling Green. Get on 65, going southwest. Take a right, just past the observatory. Just before the river. If you continue north, you'll be there shortly. So southwest, take a right, go north. Oh, take her. Yeah, take her right. Yeah, I'm thinking right this way, but we're going. Duh. Alright. Gonna go north. Hey, Doc Truman! The neighborhood at the address on Lula's card has been demolished. <laughs> of course it has. And it's placed at a large museum, still partially under construction. Well. Let's go in the museum, then I guess. Act 2, scene 4. Museum of Dwellings. We should go back to Equisoils at some point, see if Shannon knows that guy. Yep. I heard the man and the lady talking when they first came in, but they didn't see me. He had his umbrella open inside. What were you doing up that late? Mom lets me stay up late all the time. She said it's okay. I was just looking for frogs. You should be careful with frogs. They'll give you warts. I don't care. I want warts. I think they're beautiful. Besides, that's not true anyway. Let's talk to the dog. Oh yeah, he was talking to his dog. I was a weirdo. What did he say? Just small talk, you know? Like you talk to your buddies or something. Like you talk to a dock worker. Just like, damn, this is a lot of rain. I haven't seen rain like this since that storm a couple years back that took out Lizette's herb garden. I just feel bad for that old dog getting dragged all over by a couple of drunks. An old dog like that should be sleeping on the porch somewhere, but that's loyalty for you. They didn't stay long anyway. Talking about us, clearly. I just assumed they were from the power company. You know how they're always coming by unannounced and messing with this or that. I just shut myself up in my room and wait it out. No sense getting involved. How did they get in? Must have been one of the kids who left the front door unlocked. Something's gotta be done. They run around like animals. You know that floor I left a can of soda on top of my shelter door and I almost killed myself slipping on that sticky mess the next morning. Something's gotta be done. What's up here? Hmm, that's the truck. the house inside the museum. Little girl. Let's go talk to her. She's probably dead too. I was playing in that empty cabin and they came by. They asked about Dr. Truman. I know where he went, but I didn't tell them. Where did Dr. Truman go? It's a secret. Ezra told me, and I can't tell anyone else. Who's Ezra? He's my age. He doesn't really live here, he's just passing through with his brother Julian. 
First they're going to help us, but I can't say any more about that. We have a lot of secrets. The lady asked me about my parents, and I told them they were upstairs in the greenhouse. Do you want to hear a weird story? Of course I do. The old man asked me about the cabin. He said it looked like a, another house he knew, and he wanted to know where it came from. I told him nobody lived there, so he went inside. He took a long time exploring. When he came back out, he told me all about it. What did he find in the cabin? He went upstairs, and he also looked around the other rooms. I played with the dog. What did he do upstairs? He looked in some boxes. He looked out the window. He could see the museum better, and then when he was downstairs, he could tell how it was all put together. And the cabin, too. He could see the shape of it better from up there. Now, the part that is weird, he said he went into the basement. The cabin doesn't have a basement. He said he found a secret door in the floor. Then he found a rope leading down a long pit and he climbed down. He was surrounded by giant aphids. The aphids were friendly and they led him to a secret garden. The garden was very beautiful. He felt so calm he fell asleep. He woke up on the floor of the cabin. He came back outside and we said goodbye and I didn't talk to them anymore. I guess all that happened as I went inside. Seems legit. Let's go over here to this doghouse. Oop, wait, wait. Bird cage. With Robin Williams. The moment I now recall most clearly from their short visit was the bird cage exhibit. The old man stopped to rest her, maybe to think. The young woman had been anxious up to that point, but she stopped as well and examined the birdcage more closely. It seemed to elicit a tenderness from her. She ran one fingernail along the bars of the wire's cage, marking out a tuneless scale like a child's xylophone. And then they moved on. We moved on to the chicken coop. Of course. We gotta get some real chickens in that coop. Do some homesteading. All well, those folks know how to live off the land, you know what I mean? Uh, sure, we'll uh, look into it. And over here? At the doghouse? The dog loves the doghouse, right? The dog was nearly in bad shape as the old man, just sort of shrugging along. And they found some treats in the doghouse exhibit that seemed to cheer them up a bit. Where are these treats? Give me the treats! Just, just turn my umbrella back on. Or open it. You don't turn an umbrella on. I guess you do when you're clicking it in a digital game. I think you need to get some real horses in the stable. Do you like horses? Not anymore. Now we're like jungle cats. You should get some real panthers in the stable. Alright. Uh, we gotta go over here. There's one more exhibit, I think. There's another exhibit over there, too. We're limping along, making the game slow. Come on, Conway. Sure, I talked to them for a bit. Actually, we talked for quite a while. I wasn't busy. I was happy for the company. Can't sleep in a storm like that. I never could. Why can't you sleep in a storm? Bad memories. Besides, it leaks back here. You have to got to fix that roof. It's a steady stream running down the back wall and right through my, uh, this little exhibit thing. Anyway, it was, it was just going like a river all night. It's a damn hazard. You got wires everywhere. Don't you people have anyone to look at this stuff? Can I not talk to you? What if I close my umbrella?
Do 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 do. Whew. Tell you what. This game has one thing, it's dialogue. So now what? Guess we'll go over here. We'll go over here and see what's on this side of the museum. Come to the children's portable. I guess they must have gone through some papers here. It was in some disarray and a few folders were pulled out and left on the table. I mean, it wasn't too bad. I only noticed because Diane is such a stickler. She's real organized, I mean. Was anything missing? Uh, nope. They pulled out a list of the folks who didn't take the offer. Folks who moved elsewhere. They filed that back, out of order. So I guess they didn't find what they were looking for there. Hey, uh, well, I have here. Work's kind of slowed down, and it seems like... I know you folks know what you're doing. It seems like the residents are just kind of settling in. That's the idea. Yeah, I, I got that. Just, how about that roof, huh? You Just write us a check, and we'll finish it right up. I know you've got this museum thing going on, but you don't want to be slumlords now. Yep, as we go here. It's a tent. A tent of memories. They were hollering at that empty tent you folks have on display, ha! Huh? Hey, if you ever need anyone to stay in there, I've been in worse positions. We don't want to know about the positions you've been in. Pop up camper. Yeah, they came by and knocked on the window, and we had a bit of a talk through the glass. I want to come out, you know, but shady characters. They seem suspicious. I already told you, weirdos. Walking around door to door asking about Dr. Truman this late at night. I told them what I know, but in this weather? What do you know about Dr. Truman? I told them. He moved in here with the rest of us when we folks bought up the neighborhood, and then one day his house was gone. That's all I know about that. I don't want to talk about that anymore. And let's go and talk about this. Whatever this is. What is this? Dumpster? I heard them banging around out there and I just stayed quiet. I don't know what they wanted. Just put my headphones on and tried to ignore them and tell you the truth. We're gonna have to go around the tent to get to this thing, of course. If only Conway walked faster. What do you gotta say, lady? Do you know, at first I thought it might be Hudson walking up to visit. I heard him working on his boat just a bit earlier before the storm started. Then I saw the stranger's limping gait and the young woman with him, and I knew it couldn't be. I invited them in for a glass of bourbon, which they politely declined, so I just talked to them on the porch for a bit. What did you talk about? Well, we talked a bit about the neighborhood. I told them about Hudson and his sailboat, and the nice young couple in the greenhouse, and charming Dr. Truman who used to live here. They were interested in him, but of course, well, I don't know where he went. Do you know, I don't believe either of them had ever set foot on a houseboat before. I don't know that the older man had ever seen an ocean, in fact. It had always been my fondest dream to retire on a houseboat. That's why I accepted your offer and moved in here. It isn't perfect, but what home ever is? I only wish the house would sway a bit. I find that it settles my nerves. Well, if we have another storm like that last one, 
In fact, he had his umbrella open indoors. It wasn't leaking that badly. this since we're just walking around you know why not let's go up a random elevator come on dog coming soon to a theater near you Conway, Shannon, and the Hat Dog. In Death Rain. Well, it is raining up here, so. Woo! There's a big bird. We were working in the greenhouse and I saw them come up in the elevator. They were lost, obviously. It was obvious. Oh, she's got an umbrella now, too. Is this a hobbit home? Oh, of course, I saw them looking at the odd shaped building there. Did they go inside? No, I just looked at it for a bit. I don't know that I'd feel safe setting foot in there, personally. It always looks like it's about to take off. Okay, I guess it's sort of romantic. Anyway, they seemed interested in it. Tired, huddling under their umbrellas, they still stopped to examine the strange building. And then we were moving on. Moving on, moving on, moving on to the boat. Giant eagles. Who knows what they're carrying? Difficult to see or even hear a storm like that. But I was awake and alert, studying the week's forecast. It should even out shortly, I'd say. Did you talk to him? Yes, we had a short conversation. The young woman heard my radio crackling from the cabin and announced about it. The old man was a bit disoriented. Disoriented how? He asked the most inane questions about my boat, whether I took it out fishing often, not since like that. I tried to explain to him that I lived aboard, that I'd lived in a small apartment on this land before, and been kindly offered an opportunity to live here in a sailboat when the neighborhood was raised, and so on. It's difficult to communicate in a noisy storm like that. I think he may have been a bit hard of hearing to boot. Well, then they had to leave. Looking for a doctor, I think. The old man was having a bad time. It was a short conversation. Ah, oh, the greenhouse. We were talking about this. The floor was playing down on the lower level, and we'd have been having a glass of wine in the greenhouse. We ducked out of the way when we came in. After all, they were complete strangers. We didn't know them. Did you overhear him talking? Well, I heard the young woman ask her friend about his job. Some kind of furniture collector or dealer, I think. It didn't sound like things were going well. Maybe they were here looking for a buyer? Yes, definitely some kind of furniture collector or dealer. Heard him talking about antiques. Singing in the rain. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Hey, here we go to Ezra. And somebody we can talk to. I saw you folks drive up. I like your truck. What kind of truck is that? You know where Dr. Truman is? Yes, ma'am. He's out in the forest. Me and Julian took him out there a few nights ago and he didn't want to come back. He lives there all the time now. This museum is an okay place to live in the daytime, but it's no good at night. Folks just can't sleep in a place like this, and when they do, it gives them nightmares. So we take them out to the forest to sleep, and then bring them back in the morning. I'm getting pretty tired myself. He hurt his leg. We're looking for Dr. Truman to help him out. Can you tell us how to get there? You have to follow the Green River way out east, and then hop over Lake Cumberland. The roads don't go there. 
So me and Julie ain't to take you. We were just about to walk anyway. I just kept it all over. I'm not I'm not mimicking that. <laughs> Expecting that, I guess Julian is a bird. Julian the bird is going to bring us to the green forest, green river, whatever. find out next time actually because this has got to be the end of this episode it uh it was a dialogue heavy episode and now we're flying in a circle in a bird's talons what do you know next time kentucky route zero